This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com. This show is brought to you by IndieWrestling.us. Check out IWC, RWA, and more. And listeners like you, support this show at patreon.com slash wrestling mayhem show. Hey guys, it's the Indie Mayhem Show. I'm Mike Sorg at Sorgatron on the Twitter here in the May- uh, Sorgatron Media Studio here in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. This is a show where we talk with uh, people in and around independent professional wrestling. And this is a panel episode. And I'm going to tell you that we've been prepping, quote, for the last 40 minutes talking about Tim Burton movies. Uh, but uh, check out everything at WrestlingMayhemShow.com, IndieWrestling.us. We have uh, plenty of interviews with people all around Indie Wrestling, including individual interviews with most of the people on the panel here tonight that you can go look them up over on those sites and uh, check them out in action over there at IndieWrestling.us and other uh, chats we have, including the Wrestling Mayhem Show, uh, Mayhem Underground, and so much more at WrestlingMayhemShow.com. Hit us up, good times at WrestlingMayhemShow.com, 412-206-WMS0. And let us know uh, anybody you think we should be talking to on the show. We like to uh, take in any requests because there's a whole wide world of independent wrestling. And we do uh, like to discover some new talent out there that you guys think that uh, would be worth talking to or, or topics for shows like we're doing today uh, as well. So um, so with us today, we got a whole panel. We got a whole panel. And this was the uh, I, I think this is a discussion that we started uh, Marcus Mann with us today. Oh hey! Uh, hi. Hey, is that <laughs> my camera? Yeah, that, yeah, that's your camera over there. What's going on? Uh, we 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 had a conversation about like doing a panel on intergender wrestling because it's a pretty hot topic these days. Yeah, I had uh, before our last show at Rise, uh, I had tweeted out a thing about um, talking about it, or uh, just because it's become uh, to the forefront a lot more. Uh, especially uh, wrestling Twitter has brought in a lot of intergender stuff, uh, like the subset of Twitter that gets really into it. Um, and then after uh, All In happened and the praise of the Battle Royal mm-hmm. and Jordan Grace and what mm-hmm. had gone on there, uh, you and I just kind of got to a point where we're like, we need to just kind of have this discussion and do this. So, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So we put the call out and we have a fantastic panel. Uh, first of all, the newbie that's wondering what the hell she got into tonight from the last 40 minutes of not wrestling talk. Emily Fear is joining us of the uh, Talking on her podcast. <laughs> Hello. Hello. <laughs> uh, uh, tell us a little background. Uh, what, what you guys do over there? Um, well, I'm on the uh, Pro Wrestling Torch podcast about Ring of Honor, Talking Honor. And I also am on a couple, couple of other like PW Torch spinoff podcasts um, intermittently. But yeah, so we just cover Ring of honor and ring of honor related things like all in which i was at and got to see jordan mm. grace kick some serious ass and a lot of other intergender wrestling moments too so mm. but yeah so we cover the weekly television episodes for roh and the pay-per-views and all the other goings on in that universe awesome awesome i can't wait to hear your opinions and also we have uh sharing a microphone uh the the new podcast tag team of jinx and honey i almost called you honey bear that's your team <laughs> <laughs> And Honey Badger and Jinx are joining us as well to wrestlers that both belong to intergender tag teams at Rise. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for joining us, guys. And, and we say kind of kind of have matching hair color and everything. It's it's weird. It's like they it's like they <laughs> We're just one now. Just one now, yes. <laughs> so thank you guys for joining us. And again, this is a conversation we've had um, between this podcast and the Wrestling Mayhem Show uh, over the years. I think the earliest recollection I have is is uh, we we chatted with Darcy Dixon because there was a little of controversy around the the original uh, uh, Na- pro, National Pro Wrestling Day um, because there was a tag team match with her and Thunder Kitty and um, a couple. I can't remember. I know one was the former Ego Fantastico. Um, and it was one of those like giant Jack six, four guys, like ended up just beating up all the girls and it got, it was felt kind of uncomfortable and I had a discussion with her about that and like kind of where intergender wrestling was at the time. And of course, since we've had Lucha Underground and we've seen it on this kind of bigger stage, uh, as well, like, how do you guys feel about, you know, Marcus, I think we got a little bit uh, from your introduction as well. Um, uh, let's go to, 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 um, I need, I need a combined word for Jinx and Honey Badger right now since they're on the same microphone. <laughs> let's get, I mean, let's, let's talk, talk, talk to you guys that are doing this right now. You know, what, what are your experiences out there being part of this? Well, 
I would like to preface it with the fact that I understand that there are people that dislike women's wrestling and the fact that they dislike the concept of like a domestic abuse situation or something yeah, like that. I never want to shame anyone for disliking it for like being upset by something like that. But I also think that people that just see it as that haven't seen it put on correctly. They've just seen it mm. put on in a term where it's just like really uncomfortable. And unfortunately, like maybe those are the ones that make the rounds on social media. Like yes, look at this. Where it's just yeah. like uncomfortable. Mm. But yes, I do understand that some people dislike it in the fact that they just don't mm. like uh, seeing like a sort of like domestic violent situation. Mm. But mm. I think that it can be put on in so many different ways than just that. But you, Badger? Yeah, I'm not as sympathetic. Um, <laughs> so I'm really sorry for um, all the veterans that I, I, of course, have respect for, but are going to be um, probably writing an angry, vague post tomorrow. But um, my thing is you can't uh, pick and choose. Um, I am obviously a big fan of intergender wrestling. Um it's one of the only reasons I've got many opportunities that I have, so maybe I'm a little biased. Um, but as someone, and this is not like a, uh, a poor me segment, but as a victim, I don't even like using that word, but as someone who's experienced domestic violence and domestic abuse, um, I I think you're picking and choosing where you want to see it, and mm -hmm. I think it's a, a way there's more layers to it than that, which I'm sure we'll get into. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, I just, I really, um, I need a good uh, argument, I should say, yeah. about why. Like, why you are so anti. Like, it, it needs to be a very good backed up argument. That's just me. But Yeah, and I, like, so on, on my end, as someone who's booked intergender matches, mm -hmm. um, and I don't want to talk about individuals that I've had conversations with because that's private, private conversations I've had with people. But I, some of the gist that I've had of people that have not wanted to do it. Uh, and this is both, you know, uh, male wrestlers and female wrestlers who, who have been on this end of, of, you know, me, that's just not my thing or something I don't want to do um, is people that some have come from homes that have had domestic violence and, and they've had that kind of trouble making that transition of being in the ring and doing that. And so on my end, it has been a kind of a, I don't, I, I wouldn't punish anyone for not doing it. Now, normally in wrestling, like, and this is just, uh, you guys know from working with me as well. Like I'm not a, like a punishment type of guy when we book of like, if you go like, well, I'm not doing that. If there's a decent reason why we're not doing it, or if there's a de decent reason why you aren't doing that, I'm not just going to be like, well, guess what? You're fired and get out or anything like that. Like, we'll have a conversation on why you're not doing it. So if you have a legitimate reason of, you know, I came from a home that, you know, uh, this happened and I don't feel very comfortable with it, then I'm not going to force you to do it or force you to, you know, your job and somewhere you like working with, uh, you know, for our company just because it's something uh, that I think should be out there more or something that I want to promote as a product. So like I, it's, it's a little tougher on that end because you have to have that conversation kind of straight up with someone of like, Hey, we want to do intergender. Are you going to be okay with it? So that's kind of the first level of it that I've had a few bumps in the road. Uh, Emily, what's been your perspective on this? Um, you know, a, as you know, a fan and, and kind of commentator on wrestling, watching this uh, kind of develop. Well, I absolutely love intergender wrestling, so I'm kind of like the automatically biased because um, I grew up when I was like an adolescent, like I was an adolescent during the height of the Attitude Era. So, so much of wrestling was definitely not for people like me, mm -hmm. <laughs> like, you know, chubby, like 11 year old girls ha didn't have a whole lot of access to that, especially if you didn't have like a, you know, older brother or like a, a wrestling mentality in the household. So, but then there was this woman who could beat anyone up and that was China and being able to see her not just have like intergender matches, but actually have like really decent ones mm -hmm. and like decent storylines where she had like alliances with dudes and like she fought dudes, but like it wasn't all just like sleazy stuff and then getting a little older and losing touch with wrestling and then coming back to it and finding like finding like jazz from ECW and finding like other like women who really were doing that stuff in main in more mainstream wrestling outlets before I even delved into what was available on the indie scene. So 
you know, I'm very, very pro energetic wrestling. I think it offers a ton of narrative possibilities for female wrestlers, for male wrestlers. I think it, a lot of times people tend to focus on the wrong aspects of it. Like, oh, it's, it's unrealistic. Uh, have you never seen a junior weight take on a heavyweight wrestler? Exactly. Mm-hmm. Like, mm-hmm. what's the difference between watching a heavyweight take on Rey Mysterio and watching like a bulky dude mm-hmm. like Brian Cage take on a woman like Jordan Grace? Have y'all mm-hmm. seen Marco stunt? <laughs> right. <laughs> I've had I've used this analogy before, and I was because I think people always go like, "Man, you want a match? I'd love to see is Daniel Bryan versus Brock Lesnar." And people are like, that'd be an amazing match. And I said, well, What makes that different what than ma- seeing like a dude wrestle? I said, what, a chick? Exactly. Which is more unrealistic as far as a matchup? Mm-hmm. Daniel Bryan versus Brock Lesnar or Seth Rollins versus Charlotte Flair? Right. Which is actually more unrealistic mm-hmm. of a fight. Well, I mean, I think you, you can boil that down to just what we saw from a Brock Lesnar and AJ Styles. Yeah. Because I think it played exactly the same way as, you know, any of those other Brock Lesnar versus Brian or. Anybody else scenarios. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I, you look at, you know, what Seth Rollins and Charlotte have done uh, as far as uh, uh, athleticism and things like that. I think they're more on par than uh, I've watched Big Show versus Rey Mysterio. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, like you've watched Nash versus Mysterio. You've watched these types of giant versus little guy matches. Yeah. And everyone was like, oh, Rey Mysterio has the heart to do it. And it's like. It's the same story, really. Exactly. That's just what I was going to say. It's no. It's the same story that's been told over and over. It's the David and Goliath. The only difference is it's a woman. Yeah. So mm-hmm. all of a sudden, we're going to be like, oh, nope, stop. We can't have that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. What tickles me, or like, I, probably that sounds too nice, like what irks me, honestly, is that so many of the people who talk about who, you know, when intergender wrestling comes up and they're the ones who are like, oh, but it promotes domestic violence. It doesn't. It doesn't promote it. Well, it doesn't. And also, how about focusing on all the realms of wrestling culture and and culture at large mm-hmm. and wrestling that do, like, promote in some way or another, like, you know, abuses and violence towards women. Like, there's been historically a ton intergender wrestling where two performers, two professionals, like, take on this contract and do this together. It's promoting a female empowering herself to fight whoever the hell she wants. It's yeah. not like oh, we're just going to watch a dude beat the shit out of a woman for, like, however long this match is going to go on. Like, yeah, it's a wrestling match. Mm-hmm. And so right? often and when it's these people who are, like, who bring up the domestic violence, like, that's the only time they ever talk about that type of thing yeah. in exactly. any form. Like, your outrage is, that's what I was, be, like, you're, you, you're being very selective about your outrage. Like, mm-hmm. if you're saying that, um, a woman and a man in a wrestling ring is promoting domestic violence, then you better be also talking about how like two people of color is promoting, you know, like racial violence or do you know what right. I mean? Like yeah. your mm-hmm. outrage mm-hmm. better be well, across the board, and, and not selective. And there's a lot of old timey wrestlers. And, I'm not, and this isn't a like, let's tear down the old generation because they've done some great stuff and they've done some pretty terrible stuff. But a lot of the old timey wrestlers, they'll say that's a big go to of like it promotes domestic violence or violence against mm-hmm. women. But like, I grew up in an era as well, like Attitude Era, but specifically in independent wrestling in that, you know, early 2000s uh, was, um, and you know who would be great to have on here and she couldn't come on is Morgan. Uh, Morgan uh, Rockefeller, who uh, has managed with me and is one of my favorite people in the world, uh, wrestled in that independent era. And she was, you know, one of those women that was attractive and so she was eye candy and she was bad and it was like women like uh, Morgan and Crystal Frost and these types of women that the end of the shows would be uh, bad guys do bad guy stuff. Mm -hmm. Good guys make the save. They grab the bad girl manager, pull her in the ring. Everyone goes ape shit and then they spank her. And you go, how is that? Or even like, Not, I, pr- you know, promoting sexism and violence against women, yeah. and domestic violence situations. But a woman, who, you know, uh, you know, Badger or James getting in the ring, you know, we had Badger versus Bulk Nasty. Mm-hmm. And it was one of the like most liked things that we've ever posted on our social media because of that. You're telling me that that promotes violence against women more than grabbing a girl and spanking her in the middle of the ring for the pleasure of a crowd. That's that's crazy to me. That mm-hmm. mentality that's still there. Like, I wish I would have had the empowerment and the confidence in myself, like, as a as a fighter that I did, like, going toe-to-toe with Bulk Nasty, 
I wish I, I wish I would have been that person, you know, almost 10 years ago, like when my ex-boyfriend was beating me up to the point we were on the news. Like, that's what I mean when you have to like understand. And I'm not saying like, you know, I'm, I'm not saying that everyone deals with their trauma differently. So I am not discounting. Like if you are a female and you are not comfortable getting the ring with a man, good, like stand up for yourself and speak up. Um, but I'm just saying that again, I, I think the kind of circling back, like I said, there's no different story that we're telling. Um, I, I think it's honestly just a, I hate to sound so, so liberal, but like, it's, it's totally the, um, fragile male ego of like, what is the difference between me taking a spot and one of the boys taking a spot? Mm -hmm. Like that's the difference. And it's obvious. That's where your mindset is. Yeah. To me, anyway. We had a, uh, I was listening to a podcast recently uh, on, because I just did Remix, um, and it's one of my favorite shows. And the guys were saying this from two fans in the crowd, and they do a really cool podcast. It's called um, uh, Road Home from Wrestling. They're, they're good kids. Uh, they do a podcast where they go to a wrestling show, and then literally their drive home, they just podcast while they're driving home straight from the show. It's kind of an interesting concept. And they're talking about it because um, we had done Team Storm there, and Morgan was managing. And uh, they said that there was this guy in front of the entire time and he kept calling Morgan Red because he didn't know her name because she has red hair and had red trunks. And he was like, she's going to get hers. Like, they're going to get her. She's going to get hers. Mm -hmm. And this like aggressiveness of this like feeling of this woman is getting involved and is ruining things and someone better get her. It was a weird vibe to me. And I, and then like, I've never understood that because, like, I just – my wrestling fandom is very different than anyone else's wrestling fandom because uh, I'm a, I am was, like, the dude who just sat there with his arms crossed. I was like, mm, your footwork sucks. I was, like, a really <laughs> shitty wrestling fan. Um, so, like, I never guy. got into it like that, but this guy was just so vehemently angry about her. And I feel like that – like you said, that, that toxicity can come out in a match where it's mm -hmm. like this woman is ruining my male wrestling my male thing that I time. want. Yeah. You know, and I just, I don't get that. If the quality is the quality, then what's the difference? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, what do you think? I mentioned a little bit in the, in the, when we're uh, spinning this up, you know, this is something that is being presented on a bigger stage with Lucha Underground. Um, and I think they're the only major group that's doing it. Yeah. But again, it's something of somebody that's like really kind of setting their own rules uh, on that show and, and mm -hmm. everybody's treated the same. Uh, uh, and they do great with it. They I do think great. the way yeah. that yeah. they do it is phenomenal in the fact that i there's never been a time in lucha underground where they're like it's a woman getting mm -hmm. in the ring with yeah. a man it's yeah. like two rest it's not an intergender wrestling match even mm -hmm. it's just a wrestling match two right? competitors you don't have to like two competitors yeah yeah, yeah. Yeah, even to the point that Sexy Star, uh, despite whatever happened in Mexico, uh, was the the first you know major yeah. champion of a, of a group like that. Yeah, if, so. if Lucha Underground wouldn't have done what they did, Rise wouldn't be doing what they're doing. Mm -hmm. um, and I, I give it gives you a license there. at that point. It trickles down. It, it does because I will say this: whenever like Rise existed before I got there, and when I got there, it was one of the mandates that I wanted to bring in. And it's Brandon still in the chat room. Brandon still in the chat room. Yeah, I think he is. I will say Brandon? Brandon was hesitant at first, and he was like, "Do you think because in the area we run, because we run a very rural community down in Connellsville, do you think this is going to turn the audience off?" And this is very business minded model. And I said, "I don't think so." I said, "I want you to go home and watch Lucha Underground." And mm -hmm. he watched the first season in like a sitting. Like he just oh, was like, just, you know what I mean? Just binged it and was like, yeah. yeah. And texted me and goes like, this is what we're doing. Yeah. This is what <laughs> I want out of the product. If we do it like this, yes. This I haven't perfect. seen my first murder yet in Rise Wrestling. But, <laughs> and and we, we actually have kind of a murder counter on the Mayhem okay. Underground podcast All at right. this point. So <laughs> we'll get there. I'll get there. By the way, call me up whenever you do the sweet like twelve minute fight scene, like uh, a couple of weeks ago. Oh, I would love to do that. Oh, jeez, I would love to do that on the screen. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. um, everybody's just gonna sit there for so twelve dramatic. minutes. Oh. But no, like if and and your point is is like it does trickle down, mm -hmm. but I think it's trickling up as well. Yeah, in mm -hmm. a weird way, in that because it's because you've seen it more in the indies, and because I think they've signed more women. To the NXT product mm -hmm. that have done it, that is starting to trickle up because, like, when you sign Candice LeRae, you know what you're getting. Yeah. 
you know? Heidi yeah. Lovelace, too. Heidi as well. Yeah. Ruby Riot. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, well, even to that, uh, I watched a Mixed Mac Challenge the other day, and they actually did, you You're know, so close. Now, now it's, yeah, yeah I know, yeah. right? Because <laughs> <They're so> <laughs> it's still Mixed Tag Team, it's still guys against guys, yeah. girls against girls. I haven't watched, but... are they good? Because Mixed Tag is like a hard story it is. to tell. It is. Fun. It's been, it's it's been fun, to, dr- but there was a point drunk. where, yeah. like, they had the, the guys and girls swap and put finishers on the yeah. other person, right? Which, you know, they're begging off oh, because, like, you're not supposed to do that. It's a mixed tag, not your gender, right? Um, so, like, again, it's like, it's kind of baby steps, yeah. right, towards that. You know, we don't have anybody as, well, okay, so we do actually, uh, probably to a point, have somebody as imposing as China, yeah. right? Uh, actually, it, well, Rhonda and Nia Jax. Yeah. Did, didn't, did Nia pop up in a Royal Rumble yet? No. Was it? No. it was, no. Okay. Um, we got Beth Phoenix, you mm-hmm. know, as well I the years that. ago. Uh, so like, there's always been that little bit, and I'm sure that was a hard sell every time they got that through. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, right. Yeah. So, yeah, it's I, I, WWE is always interesting, and, and I I defend the WWE in this way of it's 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 an audience of one. Mm-hmm. It really is just what does Vince like, right? And if Vince likes it, it goes on TV, and you can criticize what Vince likes. But what Vince likes is generate the most money in the history of professional wrestling. So it's kind of like one of those things of like, it is what it is. Mm-hmm. Um, I think I think they're going to get there sooner rather than later. I think Ronda is the the gateway drug back mm-hmm. to being an indigender. I think she's the one that's going to break the barrier. Then we'll I get we were going to see it at WrestleMania. I yeah. thought it, when she put Triple H up on yeah. her shoulders, was so I was close. like, I was like, so this is close. it. This is totally the. I yeah, I agree. Honestly, it's so yeah, it's absolutely. I don't follow WWE super closely. Um, I don't I, either. It's just, I've seen too many people lose their minds about it. Um, so yeah, oh, but, you listen to our Monday Night Show. <laughs> <laughs> but like the major moments, I have picked up on them. The mixed mm-hmm. match challenge, I always like kind of watch with a interest, just because I want to see how close they get. And it's like mm-hmm. they get so close that like, what's the point of even not going all mm-hmm. the way? Like you've already crossed that line. Just because they don't want angry it. moms saying, "I'm not yeah. supporting your product, and I'm going to take my four four children home." Yeah. Who yeah. now? Yeah. I don't now. Instead of they now, they've just lost five tickets, mm-hmm. and they've lost five children's shirts mm. and collector's cups. Like yeah. it's all monetary. It's, it is like, that it's not, like it's not million moms, secret. you know, every yeah. letter is, is assumed to be a million viewers. Type. Yeah. Like, and, you know and this I mean? is, uh, again, <laughs> I was talking to you, some of you before about how I'm really excited about the latest He-Man documentary on Netflix. Yeah. And they talk about exactly this in the cartoon realm dealing with that. Mm-hmm. Like, you know, there's, there's, you know, She-Ra came up and there, you know, the strong figures like Tila and everything. And what can they do? Can they like, you know, beat up uh, the, 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 the bad guys in it and stuff like that. And that was a that was a big conversation, and again on a thing they had like one of the first women uh, animators as well. That was a really big thing in the eighties, yeah. um, and, and that you know remember it is a television broad something that battled with the parental television council back in the late nineties, early two thousands around the Attitude Era. So like there's a lot of sensitivity on that brand for them yeah. to do that, and they can't if they do it, they have to double triple through a corporate entity, make sure they did it the right way. Yeah. Right. Well, and, and I think so. It, and Vince is more, he's less risk adverse when it's something he believes in. Right. And sometimes when he believes in something, it doesn't matter what the risks are, he's going right. to do it. Exactly. Vince McMahon will never believe in intergender. Um, he just is never going to do it. He's not Ste- from that era. Stephanie yeah. will, yeah, eventually. I think Stephanie and Triple H will. Yeah, and they're poking at it. They're he poking never... at it. They're they're pushing it through. They're doing it in little bits this, and pieces. This is the guy who thought that uh, women fighting the UFC would crush the UFC. Yeah, the women yeah. punching, no one would. And now we that. got Ronda. Yeah, right now Ron Rounds is in his um, company. I have some uh, comments from the chat. I want to make sure we yes. get in there so it's part of the conversation here a little bit. Uh, we do. Well, first of all, Danielle loves uh, Honey Badger's hair. Oh, thank you. <laughs> oh, Mambo waved. Hi, Mambo. <laughs> <laughs> uh justin's in there uh, it says uh um that's what i've always loved about mexico and uh japan intergender wrestling uh man or woman i hey, on the rest of the message is over here for some reason um <laughs> man or woman they all uh, uh showcase as equals i feel that the girl uh busts their ass just as hard as anyone of the men and it's a, a great way to showcase both Absolutely. yeah so i mean that's the other thing like you guys train together yeah. Right. Yeah. I mean, I've seen like classes yeah. where there's one more woman in the class. She's not I there didn't... wrestling herself, trying to figure out how it works. James, you were you were the only woman in your class, weren't you? I was one of two. Uh, oh, Kate, I, or Kate was Katie the other one? She was, but she also her. um, I'll move this over. But um, 
Uh, she, <laughs> Sorry, mic problems. <laughs> no, uh, she was in my class, but she also was, I think she had a broken ankle for a little bit of the time. So right. there was a lot of time where I was mostly like just the only chick. But like even when Katie was there, it was still like two girls in a class of like five or six guys. Yeah. And I can't just wrestle the same human being forever. Right. right. I have to like, uh, yeah. you have to go around and try things on every person and wrestle every human yeah, being. Yeah, you're not going to face a girl that is Katie's height and weight class every single time. Exactly. Yeah, that too, yeah. I'm uh, more likely to face like... Badger, were you the... Oh, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to oh, no. uh, Badger, were you the only girl in your class, weren't you? Sort of. When I started, I believe I was. Um, there there was one girl, but she was very like oh, in yeah. and out. I remember that girl. Um, the only... The only one who was consistent was actually Laura Loveless. So yeah. me and her worked very closely together, which I was very fortunate. And then I thought Laura was it after was, you. That's what crazy. She was after me, but that's what I mean. Like out of all the women who okay. came through the school, um, the Laura was same. yeah. Laura was the one who like stuck through it okay. and everything. And then unfortunately, um, me and London got to work together. London Ali got to work together a little bit, but it was kind of that thing where. Um, where the training facility was at that time okay. under Brandon K. I was, I had one foot out the door and London was coming in. Yeah. So mm -hmm. it was kind of that thing of like, we passed each other on our way out. Um, another like unfortunate um, thing. But at the same time, yeah, like I trained with all dudes. Like I trained with Duke Davis. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> like I took moves from Duke Davis. That's what I mean. Like, hey, for those don't know, Duke Davis is, what is he? Um, six, six, five? Six, six five? Six five. Right. Six, so and that's it feels the funny like he's thing. a foot taller than me, and I'm six four sometimes. So. Like I, I've gotten in the ring with people like Duke and Bulk, and I have never been like in fear for my life or in mm. fear for my safety. And that's that's one of the things too with intergender wrestling. It's like I, as a wrestler, like I'm not even say it was like a woman with any opponent. It's my responsibility to stand up and say I'm not comfortable wrestling this person. Absolutely. And I think that goes with like other women too. Like yeah. you. You know, and any I really in any wrestler in general, like if you're not comfortable with a situation for any reason, if you don't speak up, then yeah. that's on you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Man like or if you, woman. yeah, if you get hurt in a match because you got in there with someone who either doesn't know what they're doing, is under the influence, or just it's not safe, then again, that's on you. So that's also where, like, as as the wrestlers, like, we have to take just as much responsibility as the promoter. Like, the promoter's supposed to make sure that the story works. And hopefully we get paid and oh, hey, make right, sure. Right. Yeah. I'm just saying. No, no, that wasn't a dig at, No, that wasn't a dig at all you. Right, that was right. like across the board. Hey, we all on. know how that that's another thing I'm sure we'll get into. But that's a different podcast. Yeah. But that's what I mean is like we we have just as much responsibility about those situations than than everybody else involved in that does, yeah. too. Uh, another comment from Edric Everhart. Oh, of, the, boy, Eddie. of the system elite is in the chat room it says no one complains when uh wonder woman or other women uh superheroes uh, uh beat up men oh, no one you. no yeah. one complains about films and movies in general when a, a fight with a woman and a man happens um and and you know again not today yeah. um these, these are arguments that happened 30 years ago yeah of course you know while we we're just talking about the he-man issues and everything well, like even that even just getting so. you know wonder woman off the ground was oh tough. yeah Mm -hmm. You know, for for you know, a, a, a Hollywood definitely thought a movie starring a woman directed by a woman wouldn't make money today. Today, today, I mean, we're talking, last year, we're talking yeah, not yeah. long ago. I mean, like if you remember the the Sony hacks, mm -hmm. um, one of the big things that Sony had released was that um, when they were talking to Marvel about like they didn't want to make movies with women because they just didn't think they would sell. Like that, because that, that was stuff like the, um, like the black hat movies and things yeah. like that under the Spider-Man properties. Right. Uh, that, and then Cloak when, and Dagger. The, when they're talking about a black widow movie, black like, widow, between, yeah. between the Marvel universe and they were communicating about it. They were just, they, this is, I mean, we're talking in the last couple of years that there's still this kind of stigma, even when you had these, you know, uh, movies like, um, bridesmaids and train wreck. And, um, what was the, uh, Stuff trying. like uh, Atomic Blonde Atomic coming Blonde, out, which was around the same time, um, but still. I was gonna say the what's the the other Scarlett Johansson action film? It's not Scarlett Johansson, but Hancock's a good example. Yeah, of a dude and 
So, a dude like, and a, a, a woman going at it who are in even a Even like relation- Mr. and Mrs. Yeah. Smith was yeah. a very big success. Yeah. And a really good yeah. movie, by the way. Mr. and Mrs. Smith is an underrated movie. It's the uh, uh, Angela Jolie, uh, Brad Pitt uh, oh, spy yeah. genre. It's a really good movie, actually. Um, I can't remember who directed it, but it was very good. Uh, circling back. Um, Probably not Tim Burton. <laughs> Just not Tim Burton. Not Tim Burton. Please not Tim Burton. No. Um, Sorry. But no, in Hollywood, and I've, I've said before, like when you watch, uh, I think it's Iron Man 2, when Scarlett Jansen shows up and she like beats up like 19 special forces agents yeah. dudes and everyone goes like, man, she looked awesome. And it's like, yeah, but like yeah. you don't believe a girl punching a dude in the face in the ring. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That's where my, like, my disbelief is no longer We're literally suspended. superheroes. That's what we yeah. do. We fight in costumes yeah. for like the entertainment of others. That's yeah. like, yeah. there's no difference, really. Yeah, yeah I'm biting people. You're gonna tell yeah. me that like, <laughs> where's the disconnect? Yeah, you're you're like growling and biting people, and yeah. But that's a good point. Like that's what I was getting at earlier, where you're outraged. Like the same guys getting on there and posting like, I do not support this. This supports domestic domestic violence. Like you better never buy a Marvel ticket yeah. because if you're not gonna believe like all that, like if you're okay with like Wonder Woman like running out on the battlefield mm-hmm. and like deflecting all these bullets that men are shooting at her, like how does that like? Let's talk about like. Yeah. That's what I mean. Like, there's so many other layers. It's you're being selective with your outrage so that you can kind of come out about what a sexist you are. Yeah. That's really that's, where mine is. Like, well, I'm not even going to, like, think, sugarcoat it. I think, it seemed like uh, hashtag edgy. Was like, it Joey Ryan had the line, like, um, if you're not for inter- intergender wrestling, you're basically saying that women can't even be fake equal. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. Thank exactly. you. That's wow. a perfect. <laughs> I've never heard that. That's a perfect. Yeah. Like you can't, they're not allowed to be fake equal. Like even in a fake sport where everything's predetermined and it's phony, yeah. Yeah, yeah. they're not even allowed to be equal there. Yeah. He's had like, a lot of, <laughs> sorry. No, yeah. no, no, go ahead. Oh, he's had a lot of really good points um, uh, that he's made about intergender wrestling in the past year. And one of the things I really enjoy is that he keeps coming back to the fact that like, it's not a real universe. No. It's a wrestling universe. And we yeah. accept certain like bends on reality. A lot of them, intergender wrestling, the least of them. He he comes back to if you believe the Irish whip yep. is an effective move, yes, <laughs> oh, yeah. and yet the idea of like a woman fighting a man in this way is unrealistic to you, then you are mis you are have a fundamental misunderstanding of pro wrestling. Like the same people that say that they hate intergender wrestling are probably the same people that love seeing Joey Ryan flip people with his dick. Yeah. yeah. So, I right. there's a where's the disconnect? Like or maybe they're the yeah. same people who don't like seeing Joey yeah. Ryan put people with his dick. And yes. it's like, they, like haven't, they need to be serious business all the time. Yeah, and they haven't learned to just say, it's not my thing. Yeah. Like, it's yeah. not my thing. That's true. That's a good Like, point. I always come back to this in conversations about wrestling in general. It's just like, wrestling is an ecosystem. It's got a lot of different, like, a lot yeah. of different types of, of, you know, there's wetlands and drylands and <laughs> wrestlands and mountains. Like, it's an ecosystem and that, like, not every like climate not every zone region is going to be for every person just because yeah. you don't like monet doesn't mean it's not art right oh no yeah. <laughs> brother one of the things i, like, I did want to get like because um whenever i i convinced badger to come back to wrestling one of the big things i wanted <laughs> like to do, every week you mean yeah uh was um one of the i think we talked about you were still hurt at the time was doing a tag team with you and keith um, that was one of the first things I wanted to do at Rise. Like when I, when they, like Brandon was like, you're taking over, you're in the book. That was one of the first things I wanted to do. And one of the things that reasons I wanted to do it um, isn't just for the intergender aspect where I thought it was interesting. Uh, I thought they would, they'd have good chemistry as teammates and in ring chemistry as well. My big point was uh, women like Jinx and Badger and Laura is another very, very good example um, come out of these wrestling schools, okay? And when intergender isn't allowed to you, you only have to fight the same amount of women, okay? Mm-hmm. And so your opportunities are less and less. And so the on the flip side, when we graduate a male student, one of the first things you do with them is to, to get them ready is to put them in a tag team with a veteran. Mm-hmm. And that lets them experience being in the ring a little bit, have that coach out there that can say like, what are you doing? Now is your time. Okay, go, don't go that type of stuff in the ring. And it really, really helps uh, performers get better. And I found that with women that wasn't happening because we didn't have any veteran women around Mm -hmm. because the wrestling schools 
if we churned out any woman that was, you know, good, immediately was getting going to Ring of Honor or Impact or getting out of here very, very fast because their success had piled up so quickly. So when, you know, girls come out of training like you guys, there's no veterans for you guys to no. take you under your wing that are women. So why not just put them with men who can do that? Absolutely. It's the same thing. So Keith is a, a guy who's been wrestling for eight, nine years. You know, he's a phenomenal tag partner. He loves mm -hmm. intergender wrestling. And so the first thing I do is like, okay, we'll put Badger, who's coming off an injury, has probably some, you know, has to get back in the flow of things, things like that. We'll put her in the tag and it's just like treating her the same way I would treat anyone off an injury who's, who needs that type of stuff. I, I like it has helped develop our talent mm -hmm. significantly better in my opinion. And that helps bring up a point of like, it makes me so irritated when it's like you're in an area where there is only the same, like five women at the most mm -hmm. where sure you've had a bunch of matches, but you've wrestled the same exact person mm -hmm. and like, other promoters and like people on the internet are going to be like, Oh, that chick sucks. That chick sucks. How am I going to get better if I'm not allowed to wrestle anyone, but the same one or two yeah. people yeah. every time I wrestle. And, and we've seen every configuration of the girls in the area. Like, exactly. like I'm literally seeing it, uh, bookended weekends of literally the same match. Yeah. It's you know. literally painful. Yeah. Like yeah. it hurts me yeah. <laughs> because it's so stressful because I'm like, I feel like not only, are you selling your talent short, but mm -hmm. you're selling your crowd short of something that they could be seeing in the fact that like, especially females have an opportunity to showcase themselves as so much more, but we're all held back because it's the easy thing to do. It's it, just like, let's have these girls wrestle 14 million times. And a lot of times, you know, when I, when I have, have you guys on, you know, I, I, I often ask about, you know, what, what is kind of the state of women's wrestling out there these days, you know, and, and trying to get a temperature on what's going on. And it, you're still seeing that, hey, there's the one women's match and, you know, on, on a yeah. card or something like that. And that's one the thing novelty. I observe. The yeah, ladies I, match. I was just going to say, like, in, like, <laughs> big letters, like, the, a women's <laughs> match. And in women's action, as in, like. Here's lady action. Like, like why am I ever the same way like wolf boy at <laughs> like fish man like at the carney festival Probably like had it go have you got, have you guys had have you heard the ring announcer say before women's match like now something for the gentleman in the audience yes. <laughs> that's I, the I one have not, no. but I, I heard like a fantastic women's match and i'm like wink, can wink. it just be the next contest is scheduled for one fall like why do we gotta be like oh like let me okay. unfasten my belt because it's a ladies' match. Like, get out of here. Like, I'm like, calm down. I don't want to go to whatever show that is. <laughs> now something further. But then I want you to, before every single, like, male match, I want you to be like, now something for the ladies. <laughs> well, yeah. and look, look, and here's the thing. Is I'm In not going to. the next sausage fest. Like, get out of here. Like, I'm not going no. to pretend that wrestling uh, and I don't want to sound like Jim Cornette here, like wrestling is a looks based business. I'm not going to suggest that there's not a the, not a sexual connotation with wrestling, both for men and women. Uh, I know women that go to wrestling because the guys are attractive. Yeah, they're very in shape. I know guys that go to wrestling to see in shape women. So there's part of it. I know that there's guys that go for the in shape guys as well. Yeah, like, women that's also for the in shape women. Yeah, yeah that's absolutely. part of it. That's always going to be a part of it. So, like, I do get that putting attractive people on your posters is part of that and selling it because you are selling a a weird fantasy in a certain way. Yeah. Like, even the best, like, like Wonder Woman is a great example, and we keep using her. But like, even Wonder Woman was definitely a, a comic book about like something for bonded. It was about a bondage well, fantasy. Like, yeah, yeah, I mean that was that was literally <laughs> the, the creator of yeah. Wonder Woman literally had that in his life. Yeah. That was yeah. his yeah. deal. That's Wonder Woman was an externalization of all of that yeah. in a fascinating way. <laughs> <laughs> it really is. So Com like, combining not... what he loved about his mom and about what he loved about women in a Cute. very weird fact. Yeah, Cute. And it was a lot about breaking chains and 
and bondage and a lasso that makes people tell the truth. It's a very bondage specific superhero. Yeah, awesome. <laughs> a, bo- a, a lasso that makes you tell the truth. Yeah. Right? <laughs> <laughs> so, like, there is in any that of that fantasy, Cecil. even like everything, like uh, Game of Thrones is a great example of a show that's a very fantasy based show that's very yeah. sexual in yeah. its way. And women want to see Kit Harrington with his shirt off, and guys want to see uh, Amelia Clark in her butt. Like, that's part of, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. That's part of that culture. So, like, I'm not saying that that, that doesn't, isn't going to be part of it, and we should, like, ignore yeah. it. But there is that type of like, yeah, blend them all when blend. women are on the show, guys are like, guys or women are going to park up and go, like, oh, okay, here we go. Like, it's it's something special. Like, we talk about, especially with like booking and stuff, like, I hate saying this to women sometimes, and I feel terrible when I do. But like, if you're the only woman on the show, I often say like, man, guys, stay safe out there because you're going to be over no matter what. Mm-hmm. Like, when you're that different on a show, mm-hmm. you're going to be over. So just stay safe. You don't have to do anything crazy. Can I also like, say... uh Big Rig, Jason Tyler just messaged me and said, you guys just ruined Wonder Woman for me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, see? Sorry. Ruined or, or no. completely made it be- I mean, even better. That's fair, too. Come on. It could be something like you're just visiting a whole new world. <laughs> just, it's just opened up your third eye. Somebody, just, somebody is gonna go rant Wonder Woman again, and and they play it down in the movie. Oh, you know yeah, they do. Oh, Read yeah, Grant Morrison's Wonder Woman. It's, watch, watch the TV show. Honestly, oh god, the, yeah. the original TV show is way more faithful to that specific <laughs> realm. <laughs> And that's a lot of that is now available. The DC Universe yeah. just did a thing and has all that old stuff, including the original pilot. And there's anyway. a different podcast now. Um, um, so I want to touch on, and, and, and maybe you guys can help me as a writer. Okay. So as a writer, I'm, I'm definitely in a male voice in my process. This, this is just is a brainstorming session for you, too. Please. Okay. No, and here's something that I've struggled with. And I actually had. Really, really long talks with Kelly Klein about this. And Kelly is uh, one of the sweetest, nicest, I love Kelly. wonderful people mm-hmm. I've ever met. Mm-hmm. Um, and she's killing it in Japan right now. Uh, so shout out to Kelly. Um, when we book intergender, uh, predominantly, it is a baby face woman versus a heel male. It has been harder to book a heel woman versus a baby face man and yeah. i have not found the formula yet uh to make that story work in a way that the crowd gets behind the crowd easily gets behind a yeah. jinx or badger hot tag and they come in and they start rocking guys and girls and there's no sorts of problems there the opposite when a woman starts getting heat on the guy and then he has to like rock her back the crowd feels uncomfortable i've never been able to figure out how to do that Mm -hmm. so like i'll open up if you guys have ideas please share them with me because i'm an idiot in that respect like i'm trying to learn as i go as as how to do this as well it's it's a little part of the 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 area that's been tougher and and has there been any examples like has lucha been doing that to any great effect really when you think Mm -hmm. about it like i i I I can think it was like eva's least matches or tag teams right yeah yeah like you have your mariposas and your um 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 cobra moons in there Mm -hmm. but i can't think of anything predominantly they've done there's a match um beyond wrestling did an all intergender card in april over wrestlemania weekend lit up so every match was an inter- intergender match. So they had to like get creative about mm-hmm. it because like you don't want to just see that same repetition. So there were a lot of good tags. There were a lot of good singles matches. A really great one between Jonathan Gresham and Karen Q. That was really mm-hmm. great technical wrestling. I love Jonathan Gresham. And, and so I much. yeah I love both of them. So like it's cool. yeah it was, it's great too. yeah. Jonathan Gresham is two feet tall. It is all green screen. It's all tall. green screen. It's yes, crazy. You, you don't know you don't know the post production. This is why I can't do a live eye pay per view with. Uh, him on the, yeah. yeah but so that match is really great because there isn't like a straight up heel face dynamic there okay. there's a lot of like yeah. technical yeah. wrestling happening there but there is a match early on in the card between josh briggs and oh, it feels so bad for getting her name i'm afraid i'm gonna get the wrong one davian i know who you're talking about okay so early on in the match and it does help that they're kind of physically like they are physically uh okay. comparable um she is like kind of taunting him in a way and like kind of pushing him and like getting the like yelling at the crowd. And she clearly plays a heel just in general. Um, it works really well to put a guy like Josh into a more face territory, even though Josh Briggs is usually not 
total face. So, uh, yeah, it, it works. It does. Um, when he has to like push back and fight back, the crowd is with him. Yeah. And it's not like, it doesn't feel icky because like she's been harassing like everybody. She's at the crowd. She's at him. So everybody's like, it's okay. It, he's taking on the heel. He's like, he's getting his, come, he's getting comeuppance because like, she's just, she's been taunting him and, and mm. harassing him and bothering the whole time. Well, basically the women has to be that bad. Yeah. Not, not in a, like, like the guy that made you feel uncomfortable or, right. or a remix, but like in a, yeah, yeah. no, she kind of deserves this at this yeah. point. Right? A certain amount of and, I, and I think there's a, yeah. there's a seal breaking that you have to do. And right. once yeah. you see it and once you're like, okay, that's what they did. Yeah. It can then generally start to happen. That's more. the problem is if you want to build up a story and you want to build up that payoff when, you know, the, mm. the heel female finally gets pie faced or, yeah. you know, something like that. You're going to have to, unfortunately, which is so funny. Like we're so afraid of intergender wrestling, <laughs> but like what I'm about to bring up is going to make so many people uncomfortable. Like you have to bring up like the woman being the meddling, like, mm-hmm. yeah, like screwing over the guy, almost like, um, they kind of started touching on this, like way back when the whole, um, I hate bringing them up cause you're going to call me a Mark, but with the whole AJ Lee, Daniel yeah. Bryan, uh, mm-hmm. CM Punk storyline yeah. thing where she was just like making out with another dude and yeah. like interfering. And then like when she got caught, she was all upset. Yeah. Like that's the problem is you're going to have to test the waters that, it, and it is like risky. Like you're gonna have to risk yeah. like, okay, <laughs> because she's literally only going to, she's going to play like only a couple roles. Um, she's going to be the slut yeah. who's starting stuff between like the Which tag team that right. everybody loves mm-hmm. and yeah. everyone just wants to see her again. It's that buildup of she's going to have to be so conniving or just like do, you know, like shitty ex-girlfriend things yeah. that that's going to be the buildup. I, lo- I, that is like the one character I have so wanted to avoid. Exactly. Like I, a I, shitty ex-girlfriend. And I, and I remember a story, and I, again, probably I won't say names, um, of a girl who trained here. Uh, this was a while ago. And she was coming out of school and was doing very good. And they were like, oh, we need to work on characters. We need to figure this out. And it's like, okay. And they go, okay, so um, whose girlfriend is she? Yeah. Whose girlfriend, on, who on the roster is Ew. she yeah. The, yeah. the girlfriend that's of? That's gross. And you go, that's not her character. Like, no. that's, yeah. That's, yeah. that's the first thing you think of. Like, so, like, because, uh, like, Morgan again manages Pollock a lot. You know, we did for years. He's still the remix. Yeah. And the first thing is like, well, that's his girlfriend, right? It's like, no, no, that, that just because she's with him doesn't automatically make that yeah. his girlfriend, which is a weird dynamic. Because for what a hundred years, that's the way it was. Like that's the way we told stories, and that's the way we did it. So like breaking that dynamic has been tough. I think we've I've tried to do it a, with tag teams with that type of stuff. It gives me flexibility to use heel women in a tag spot. Um, Almost definitely. And, and, and so the tag intergender has been really great for Rise just because it gives me flexibility. And so I can say to guys like, you don't have to bump the girl once yeah. if you don't want to. Like, we'll find a creative way to make this work. And she doesn't have to bump once. It mm-hmm. gives you so many options for that storytelling. Yeah. Like you mm-hmm. can mm-hmm. really like options are endless. I really like especially like intergender tag team things yeah. just because it also like opens things up to the future where it's like if you do want to lead to like singles intergender matches singles mm-hmm. like same gender matches there's mm-hmm. just like you you're just there for each other there's no real like gender like like there's no real gender to like being there for someone that has your back yeah. like mm-hmm. and i think that's a good point someone brought up earlier um I can't remember because the beer's kicking in, but um, <laughs> someone brought up how, like, like it's it's not believable. Um, it's derailed because I'm. Um, hold on, it'll come back. It's like a lazy Susan. I'm sorry, <laughs> whoever brought it up, I'm gonna I'll take credit it. for it either way. Yeah, so either worry. way, it's Mark. Man. Oh, like it's it's done well. Like someone brought up the people who are super. I'm gonna go with super anti uh, intergender mm-hmm. without any other like any other layers behind that I'm going to take it at face value is because they've seen it done wrong. But that's like another thing though. Like I always see the big argument. It's always like, it's always a veteran posting a video of like a woman taking like a shitty bump or Mm -hmm. taking a bump off a a weapon. But here's the thing. Are you like running to your Facebook 
when like one of like the boys yeah. takes a shitty bump like yeah. are you outraged yeah, like just, that gets, guy remember, needs to be removed off the roster and he should be ashamed of himself like yeah. you better be like in like you would just be on facebook He's all day in yeah. the business do you remember the the kimberly controversy yes that's the, yeah. that's actually what, what i was referring about. to is, how many years ago was that that was had to have been like three or four it was years, years ago, ago when people are still bitching about it that's the funny thing like who did she well, took so it was uh are you sure it wasn't the candace one when she took the no, uh, cedric's finisher no this was, was kimberly, kimberly where she took, that, no that was awesome she yeah, was that awesome. was bang. i was there for that that was bomb or something oh, wow. out of it yeah she took a buckle bomb but i think it was and then there was, it was another a brutal thing. buckle bomb yeah, like, it, was it was bad, bad. was it her and keith lee no no somebody i can't remember but it was it was the buckle bomb and then it later there was a move onto a chair and she landed wrong. Yeah. Which, uh, disclaimer, that bump. can help happen anyone. to anyone. That can happen with an yes. any Like, match. it can happen between the two best people. Like, technically in that match, it was it two happened, of the best people. It, ha- it happened between Kimberly, Finn Balor like, and, uh, and Seth Rollins when he took yes. a bad buckle bomb. Yeah. Right. Like, <laughs> exactly. It, can, it, it happens, happens all the time. It happened to Sting. It, it happens in shows <laughs> that happen so every week. you can't say it's Constantly. like, oh, it's yes. the dude. And you don't the dude's going to hurt the woman. Like. No. Paige is not wrestling because someone gave her a shitty strike to the neck. Yeah. Like, think about that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. A strike is the reason Paige is probably never going to see, unfortunately, the inside of a wrestling ring. So, so you can't tell me that, oh, it's because the dude's going to hurt the girl. Yeah. Again, there's so many other layers yeah. under that that you, you have, have to peel time. back. Well, like, yeah. I want to see, like, how you interact in your family. Like, what morals are you treating your daughter? Like, how are you treating your daughters? Like, what morals are you teaching them? Again, there's so many layers that guys don't want to peel back. Mm-hmm. It's, again, like, how how can I get my little bit of sexism out with, with while still being, like, the family guy? Yeah. Like, we know what you're doing. Yeah. It's, it's obvious. There's protective impulses that come out of insecure places, and it's just, like, they're not willing to step back and interrogate the reasons why they feel this way. They just feel that way yeah. because it's a protective impulse. And it's like, that's great, but, like, clearly these women don't need pr- your protection. Yeah. They're all also, they are also the same professionals that you are yes. like paying to see when you are paying your ticket to see the male wrestlers. Yeah, you're paying exactly. for me just as much as you're paying for them. You, right. like, you really are. You are paying for this same realm, and within that realm are professionals who like are prof- are practice professionals at this craft. Like, Absolutely, we it, all train just the same. Yeah, we yeah. all train together. Train just the same thing. Yeah. We all set up rings just the same. We all train just the same. We like know yeah. exactly the same thing. It's just when and where you put us in the ring. Yeah. Like, sort of going back to that Kimberly moment, I remember it. Yeah. I remember being in... Are you finding this bomb? I, I'm, I'm re-watching it right now. So, I, I, I remember when I saw it, the, my first uh, initial response, and this was a couple years ago, was, It'll be in the chat room on the live Facebook. If yeah. anybody does want to see it, it is kind of sick, and, you know, uh, it, I, it doesn't look good. It'd be, no, it's, yeah. it's bad. I remember seeing it, and my first instinct was, if they did that for shock value, shame on them. Right. Okay. If that's right. just something they did as a shock value of like he power bombed a woman, Whoa. how dare? Then okay, shame on you guys because that's just dumb. And I go and I because I actually was on Connor's podcast when Matt still had a podcast. Shout out to Matt Connor wrestling with death. It's dead. Um, <laughs> the podcast is dead. I was on that podcast like a week after this happened, mm-hmm. and I remember saying if the story because it was like something where like I can't remember who the wrestlers were. But the guy was feuding it's with like uh, her boyfriend. It's Chris Dickinson. Okay. That, that executed the move. Yes. yes. And he was just on, and actually he was just on Blackcraft, and I think yeah. there was a pretty bad botch on that too. So he was feuding with like her. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. He was yeah. feuding with her there was boyfriend. A botch on that one. And yeah. then so he power bombed her as like a you know f you to him. Yeah. And I was like, if that's the story, and that's the the the, the payoff to it, and that's yeah. the build to you know, Chris Dickerson versus her boyfriend, then we've wasted it. Yeah. But I go, if they come out the next show and he beats the shit out of her boyfriend mm-hmm. and out comes Kimberly out of the thing and she makes the save, Ooh. then that makes Now sense. you got a story and now you're actually doing business yeah. where people are going to put money down to pay to see something. That's what's killing me about this. About So someone shouted out Candace LeRae earlier yeah. and it's mm-hmm. like, of course, we talk about Candace LeRae a lot because like she is like probably the highest profile of interge- of wrestler She's right now. She's the queen of women. Yeah. Well, she yeah. has the biggest like intergender background and has reached NXT. So like, she's in a, in a really mainstream forum. But all the great things that she did in her career as a wrestler, as an intergender wrestler before she went to NXT are being like completely negated in NXT, despite the fact that they had the perfect 
opportunity mm -hmm. to merge her talents mm -hmm. and like storyline, which in a lot of intergender wrestling matches, I will say the one argument that has a little bit of water just because like it's kind of true in that a lot of intergender storyline uh, matches don't have a build storyline. Yeah. Like you can develop a storyline within the ring and that's totally legit and awesome. Mm -hmm. But like in Candace's case, she could wrestle the guy who is like tormenting her husband. Mm -hmm. And this is like a real storyline that they've developed with these two guys now. And it's really effective. And like she had perfect, they had perfect moments to use that and yeah. they didn't. Yeah. And that's and, the, and they could come around to it again. And I, I feel. think, I think and, the, and, 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 and Champa, yeah. Ch Champa is, is such a piece of crap that you can like do some interesting things yeah. with that. Yeah. I think, I think the, the thing is with that and as someone on, on, on a writer standpoint, I go, okay, so if we get to Candace versus Champa, how do I make that, that it's about Candace versus Champa and not, and not, not just Johnny another Garnett. step yeah. for yeah. Johnny to be the knight in shining. That's so it's not too. like, did you know that they're married? Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Yeah, and, and so like, how do you write that story? And I, I and I don't have the answer. And, and I mean, they pay a lot of those people a lot of money to have that answer. Yeah, mm -hmm. you know what yeah. I mean. And there is an answer. Like I have that answer, but like they would never do it. <laughs> I, right. Like I would say, like have them just like power bomb her through fucking. <laughs> have them just like mm -hmm. do yeah. something like absolutely like disgusting. Like in, in what. I think if anyone could get away with it at this point in NXT or WWE, right. it would be Choppa because he's just like such a scum of the earth human yeah, being. Exactly. Yeah, that exactly. That I think if he they were to cross that border with any uh, with anything right now, it could it could very well be that because that would make the most sense. Yeah. Well, guys, we're hitting uh, about an hour of this <laughs> conversation that wasn't about Tim Burton. Uh, <laughs> and uh, I just wanted to kind of go around the horn and get some final thoughts about okay. uh, where we're going with intergender wrestling, where you uh, kind of want to see it go here shortly, and how, how quick do you think we're going to get there? All right. Well, we'll, we'll start with me. I, we will start with Marcus. Okay. Has he, has he figured out his storyline yet? <laughs> no. <laughs> uh, and I'll get there. I Trust yeah. me. I have been really, really happy uh, that the company I got to take the helm of uh, was what we'll call a tip of the spear, hopefully in Pittsburgh, uh, in the, in this, um, when Brandon and I started it, we had a lot of conversation about development and talent. And, and a big part of that was the women in the area getting that opportunity and not just, okay, the same four matches with each other. Let's yeah. do this. So I, the two things that I've been very passionate about over the last couple of years have been intergender wrestling and tag team wrestling. I think they're the two, uh, best ways to tell stories in wrestling today. They're the, the way that you can do it uh, the most differently. And the fact that we have been able to do tag teams, factions that are intergender. We've done six person. We've done eight person. We've done, I mean, I think Badger's done every tag, every version, every version of every intergender match that we can do now, uh, over a rise. That's one on one hint, hint. We, we were right. supposed to do one last time. You couldn't make it. We'll get there. <laughs> Don't yell at me. Uh, we'll get you. We'll get. We'll get that one for you. Um, but uh, to me, I think uh, it was a test in a very rural area mm -hmm. with a very old school fan base. I was gonna say, wait, is it is it that rural fan base or is it like wrestling fans? Like, what are you seeing there? We have a very, very rural fan base and a very mm. wrestling You guys fan are base. an hour south of Pittsburgh, yeah. very close to the West Virginia we're very, border. We're closer to Morgantown than we are to Pittsburgh. Yeah, yeah, so that gives you an idea there. So it gives you a little bit of an it's idea. It's not a the city Walmart crowd. is huge. It's yeah. like the biggest attraction yeah. the, within... The, I believe the county fair was... Yeah. The next street over yeah. from your show. So, and you still drew very yeah. well. Uh, we, <laughs> yeah. So in that area, the fact that we have never had a complaint by any fan. Mm -hmm. uh, I've had complaints about, I've had complaints for people that work there. Uh, <laughs> they didn't like it. They don't know. They're not there anymore. Well, that's fine. Um, but never had a fan complaint. And I will say this again, some of our biggest social media stuff that's hit has been intergender stuff. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, I will say one of our most liked photos that's ever done is, 
Bulk Nasty versus Badger where she's screaming at him and not standing down. It has been one of our biggest social media posts that we've ever done. And it kind of clued me in of like, this is, this is becoming acceptable. Mm-hmm. And it's not just becoming acceptable, it's becoming wanted. And once you do that, business follows and people are putting money down to see it. And money will always speak above morals, above anything you want to do. If you want to do, like, we want to do it because we thought it was the right thing to do. But at this point, we'd be dumb not to because the money's there eventually. Right. Right. So it's, I think it's going from, uh, I think having a women's division in a wrestling company is the new curve. If you want to be ahead of that curve and you want to be ground, like, be on that. Intergender wrestling is ahead of the curve, mm-hmm. and you only have maybe a year, maybe two years until okay. that's the curve. Okay. Yeah. Right. Emily, what are your thoughts? Yeah, I mean, pretty much everything. I, I, <laughs> I think it's funny to talk about like the Rise audience, uh, like the one that you guys draw out from that area because Rise with a Y. I Rise. don't say it enough. Rise with a Y. <laughs> I want to point that out. Um, so I don't drive, so getting out to Connellsville is difficult for me, and uh, my partner has a bad back, so it's like getting out that hour drive is like not always feasible. Um, so I follow what I can, but when I talk to people, especially when I referred to the card this past month and with the, you know, various intergender matches, um, I immediately had more people who I was talking to be like, Oh shit, we gotta, we gotta drive out there. We didn't see this. We have to see this match. So like you're, you're still getting the following you're getting from around that area and you're, that's not hurting your following. But I tell you what, like those intergender matches, m- most locals don't have them. Mm-hmm. And so that's going to bring people out in the city. And they're going to take that hour drive to see that because I talk to people in other major cities whose locals don't even do intergender matches. And they want that too. So, yeah, I don't know. I think you're right. I think it's like the new, the new curve ahead yeah. where people are wanting it. They are praising it. It's getting more attention. It's getting more legitimate attention. Like it's getting more attention of like the l- legitimate fashion where it's like, you know, at, like news media outlets like Sports Illustrated are running full stories about it and and offering a perspective that's like much more rounded and and encompassing of the professionals involved than say some of the like more curious pieces that might have been done years ago. So I can only see things going up. And I was delighted to be wrong about All In. On the Talking Honor podcast before I went to All In, I predicted that like aside from Jordan Grace, we weren't going to see any other moments because I just couldn't get that lucky. But there were at least a couple other intergender wrestling moments. I mean, there were women who were, were involved in bumps and, and et cetera. But like Joey Janela was involved in a match and Penelope was in there and Penelope she was giving was it to mm-hmm. badass. Mm-hmm. She, yeah, she wasn't just interfering. Like she was in there. She was giving like Rana's and like she like I love her. She was flipping around the ring and like, like, you know, kicking ass too. So mm-hmm. like that was legitimately intergender wrestling moment in that show. That girl and- got respect at the gathering of the juggalos. <laughs> I'm just gonna say. I mean, right? There's, there's right? context. There. You don't. They don't just give you respect. No, they do not. You they have to. You no, they do not. You have to earn the respect. The fake goes free. That's true. That's true. That's true. But yeah, so like in a house like All In, like in amongst ten thousand fans, uh, many of whom would probably consider themselves a little bit more like of the dude realm of wrestling mm-hmm. fans. Everybody was into it. And you mentioned about Rise being the only one doing it. This is amongst, uh, if my latest count is correct, uh, one of six promotions in the greater Pencil- uh, Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania area. Right. Cute. So and you well, know. And, and uh, shout out where it's due because they don't do it regularly. But Jinx had a phenomenal intergender match at IWC with Jackson Argos. That is true. And Jackson so and Jackson that. was in the chat room reminding us that you kicked them in the ding ding. I did. Yes. Um, and I was going to come on here and say that I do find great pride in the fact that we were the first ever legitimate intergender singles match in IWC history. Yes. I take a lot of pride in that, even if that wasn't the original plan and I had to be a backup for Jonathan Gresham, which is terrifying in itself. I'm like, <laughs> okay. Now you just gotta... I'm a technician. Now you just have to wrestle Jonathan Gresham. Yeah. Yeah. You oh, God. You're just a squid instead of the octopus. Oh, my yes. gosh. Oh, I'm my the, gosh. I'm the shrimp. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the prawn. Oh, I'm the shrimp. Little scram. <laughs> it's me. <laughs> Jinx the scram. Final thoughts, Jinx? Um, like how you always say, where do you think women's wrestling's going when you have us on your podcast? Yeah, yeah. I think that women's wrestling is 
bleeding into men's wrestling. And like you said, we're not being treated like the wolf boy and go (laughs) see the two-headed goat at the fair anymore. And just not... And I think the next step beyond intergender wrestling is to get to a point where it's not even labeled as intergender wrestling. It's just come see a match. And we... People aren't there seeing it like, ooh, let's see men and women fight. They're here seeing it like this is just a different avenue that was never explored before. There's so many different stories and so many different things that can be done now that it's not even, it's going beyond intergender wrestling and just like, let's go see wrestling. Awesome. Badger? Um. My my biggest thing is to, especially the veterans, but just really anyone in general who, again, is um, having the, the outrage, um, I really want to see your outrage in other places like, hey, let's make sure these women who don't have their tits out get booked just as much as the women with their tits out. I'd really want to make sure that the women are also getting, you know, paid fairly and is just as much as the men. Like, I want to really see, like, if you're truly that outraged over women standing up to a man, like, I want to see you, like, donating to Planned Parenthood. I want to see you, like, standing up and donating to, like, women's shelters. Like, you have to realize that you are kind of stepping into territory where I want to, again, I, is it about your morals or is it about your fragile male ego? So just understand that it's very obvious, um, no matter how you try to spin it or, and, and I get it. And like I said, I'm not, I'm not discrediting your feelings. Like you have every right to feel the way you feel. And also, you know, to have your opinions. Like I would never try to say like, you're not allowed to feel this way. You're not allowed to think this way. I just want you to really unpack it for yourself and be like, where is my outrage really? Is it because the business is evolving and I'm uncomfortable with it evolving? Or is it, because I genuinely have a fear for these women I'm assuming are made out of glass. So that's kind of my only thing with, uh, it, it's mainly, it, it is one generation and I'm not trying to call them out. And again, like Marcus said, I am not taking away everything they've laid the ground for us and everything like that. Um, it's just, again, I want you to really sit down and unpack where your outrage is coming from. As far as where women's wrestling is going, and this is kind of like Marcus was saying, like, like ideas and again, like, my ideas are shit, so just you know, take it with a grain of salt. But my thing I've always wanted to see, I've always had this like, you know, like wrestling, like if I could write, like everyone's always like, if you could build a, a, a match or a feud or whatever, I always wanted to see like the cocky, like the only character I've always like seen in my head is the Miz or like someone very Miz-like. I really just want to see like him dominating, of course, via, via cheating and, and all that other shit. But I really want to see him open like an open challenge and someone like I would even give and, and you know my thoughts if anyone's watched these podcasts before everyone knows my thoughts about Ronda Rousey but like the Miz coming out and like something believable too, like the the Intercontinental Championship or you know the the U.S. title or something like that being like I'm issuing an open challenge to anyone in the back room and then Ronda walks out and if that, first of all the crowd should just lose their shit right there and of course like Miz would play it off like honey like autographs will be later totally playing it off and then she shows up. And she keeps like, and all the odds, of course, are stacked against her. Like they're going to make her go through like rounds of shit and number one contender. And she maybe gets like almost there and gets screwed. And then um, and I'm not a fan of her, but even someone like Linda McMahon walks out and is like, no, you're going to like WrestleMania. You're going to SummerSlam. You're going to the mm. Royal Rumble and you get this title shot. Like you mm. get a redo. And then she wins it because, you know, I'm always a big fan of like ever since like seeing China do it. I'm always going to be a fan of women holding that title. And again, it can be done. It, mm-hmm. It's mm-hmm. not rocket science. It just has to be done well. Yeah. yeah. So and we've yeah. talked about this and, and I'll and this isn't spoil not spoiling anything because I, I run a company. <laughs> um, but so one of the big things about our company is we have only one title. Um, we don't have a mid card title. We don't have a women's title. We don't even have tag titles yet. 2019, we are having tag titles. Don't worry. Um, we're growing. First. We're growing. Um, I will say this. And, 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 and props for not rushing that. Yes. 
we're trying to build some, especially at this one title. So our grand championship, the line has always been anyone can compete for this title. Mm -hmm. And I will tell you in 2019, you will see a woman in the main event competing for our title. Like it will be, it will happen in 2019. Um, now that is a hefty thing to say to all the women on my roster because including the one sitting right here. Yes. Because that is a main event spot and you've got to get there. Mm -hmm. It's got to be the right person. It's got to be the right time. It's got to, you know, and so we're not just giving it away. Mm -hmm. Uh, I'm not just saying that as a, but I do have confidence in the women on my roster that they can get to that main event level and can main event a show for our title. I really do. So I, 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 I would put money down in 2019. You will see a woman competing for our title. Awesome. Some great yeah. comments on Justin out there saying, hey, Rise is worth the drive. Go check it out. Um, thank you, everybody, for joining us. Um, I, 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 we'll have links to everybody's social media and your podcast as, as well uh, here. Everybody I still check don't out. know what my Twitter is. <laughs> this is why I didn't ask. Uh, but, uh, but but thank you, everybody. If you want to see what Rise is doing, Rise with Y, uh, uh, check out Rise Wrestling on Facebook. Or Rise with Y. They're doing, great they're doing good stuff, too. But I'm just saying, it's, <laughs> yeah. it's all women. I got, it's all I got a women. lot of heat when they're like, where are you from? And I was like, Rise. They're like, they're like, let's go fuck up their shit. I'm like, no, please, I like them. Uh, but but go check out Rise Wrestling over at IndiaWrestling.us. We have all the shows since February up on there, and uh, the majority of the shows are also a part of the IndiaWrestling.us network. Uh, you can uh, sign up over there for a free trial. You can go check it out for free and see some of these matches that we've been talking about over there. Uh, indie wrestling and dot us and the indie wrestling dot us network thank you everybody for com coming on thank you the great chat room for a kind of a, a wednesday late wednesday evening we had a tremendous uh chat hanging out there i think half the rise roster and uh and uh, front office were in this in the chat as well. Uh, so thank you everybody uh, for that. Please check out everything again at IndieWrestling.us. The past interviews we've done uh, with a lot of people that are on the panel and so much more. And WrestlingMayhemShow.com. And until next time, please support intergender wrestling. <laughs> This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com.